Licht und Ton, das ist ja toll. Ja, willkommen zurück im letzten Abschnitt ähm, des Symposiums der Darmstädter Tage der Fotografie. Fast wieder alle da, glaube ich. Ja, ähm, bevor wir jetzt wirklich zu dem letzten Teil kommen, äh, wollte ich nochmal auch kurz das nutzen, um mh, mich zu bedanken, weil so ein Festival funktioniert eigentlich nur, weil ganz, ganz viele da dabei sind und da vielleicht nochmal so einen kurzen Eindruck zu vermitteln, was eigentlich so dahinter steckt, um so ein Festival so zu machen, wollte ich das kurz einfach nochmal auflisten. Ähm, das fängt damit an, dass wir natürlich äh, gefördert werden. Ähm, das ist ganz wichtig, da hilft uns die Stadt Darmstadt, da hilft uns das Land Hessen, ähm, die auch äh, mit in den Kulturfonds einzahlen, der ein großer Förderer ist. Und äh, eigentlich zwei Jahre bevor so ein Festival losgeht, ähm, stellen wir schon einen Antrag äh, und planen schon, obwohl wir manchmal noch gar nicht das Thema wissen, ähm, um dann eben in dieser Größenordnung das durchführen zu können. Also da steckt schon mal sehr viel Unterstützung drin. Dann gibt es in Darmstadt einige Stiftungen, äh, die Bürgerstiftung, die Sparkassenstiftung äh, oder Kurt und Lilo Werner Stiftung, die auch speziell dieses Symposium gefördert haben, ähm, die eben diese ganze Arbeit unterstützen. Dann noch viele kleine Unternehmen, das ist ähm, der Fotodrucker, das ist, keine Ahnung, ähm, Getränke, das ist die Zentralstation als großes Unternehmen, die ein, einen super sicheren Ort uns hier geboten hat. Äh, wir wollten eigentlich in einem, in einem anderen Veranstaltungsraum sein, aber die Zentralstation macht seit Mai ähm, hier Veranstaltungen, von 0 auf 100 heißt das Konzept, eben um Kultur in Zeiten des Lockdowns zu ermöglichen und äh, das hat sich zum einen super bewährt und äh, gibt ein gutes Gefühl eben auch trotz steigender Zahlen dann äh, so eine Veranstaltung zu machen. Deswegen vielen Dank auch zum Beispiel an Stefan Körner da hinten, der ähm, mit vielen YouTube-Tests äh, uns hier ertragen hat, um auch sowas dann mal schnell digital zu machen, weil das ähm, hat auch einen riesen Aufwand nochmal produziert. Sonst standen wir immer auf der Wiese und haben einfach drauf losgeredet. Jetzt macht man es technisch schon mal gedoppelt und dann auch noch digital. Das ist nicht einfach so, schon gar nicht, weil wir ja nur Fotografen sind oder so. Genau, dann gibt es ein großes Team dahinter. Also zum einen gibt es die Künstler, die sich beworben haben, die Künstler, die ausgewählt wurden. Denen möchte ich auch danken, weil die machen eigentlich das Ganze aus, ähm, die hier in den Ausstellungen zu, da sind. Ähm, die sind auch alle im Katalog, da kann man die natürlich alle sehen. Das ist jetzt der kurze Werbeblock zum Katalog wieder. Ähm, dann gibt es das Team, ähm, was aus dem Kunstforum der TU Darmstadt äh, besteht, äh, mit der Leiterin Julia Reichelt und den Mitarbeitern des Teams und äh, die sozusagen äh, im Hintergrund da auch dabei sind. Dann gibt es die Stefanie Stadler, die ich äh, kurz rausdeuten will, die ähm, die ganzen Künstler aus der E-Mail-Kommunikation kennen, aber die jetzt seit einem Jahr eben als Projektassistenz ganz viel Kommunikation, Organisation gemacht hat und auch seit Dienstag, glaube ich, Zoom-Meisterin ist und ähm, das lief heute eigentlich, glaube ich, brutal reibungslos, äh, fand ich. Ich hätte eigentlich gedacht, wir hätten viel mehr Katastrophen. Also insofern vielen Dank an die Stefanie. Na, genau. Das, äh und dann gibt es noch Aufbauteams und äh, also allein, dass da in der Stadt, da stehen jetzt mehrere Tonnen Stahl und innen drin noch mehrere Tonnen Steine, damit die Bilder nicht wegfliegen. Da gab es ein zehnköpfiges Team, die sowas dann in mehreren Nachtaktionen einfach mal schnell hingestellt haben. Also ähm, jetzt in der Stadt unterwegs sind natürlich an Ausstellungsorten und das alles bedarf es. Also ich schätze, da sind so 30 bis 40 Leute am Start und äh, nicht zuletzt auch dann das alte Team der Darmstadt Tage der Fotografie, also die Initiatoren, die auch äh, Teil der Jury sind, äh, die dann zu so einer Veranstaltung immer wieder so zusammenkommen. Also vielen Dank an alle, die es ermöglichen, genau. Und dann kommen wir jetzt zum letzten Teil des ähm, Symposiums. Ähm, leider haben wir da auch äh, vor zwei Wochen eben die, die, wie sagt man nicht, Absage, sondern die Verwandlung ins Digitale angekündigt bekommen, Jürgen Teller. Ähm, und jetzt, bevor wir mit ihm hier direkt starten, sind wir gebeten worden, oder es ist der Plan, einen Film ähm, von ihm zu zeigen. Der Film heißt Dieter, ähm, Erlangen 2017 ist, glaube ich, der komplette Titel. Und den schalten wir vorweg und dann danach startet quasi der Talk oder das Gespräch. Jetzt 
wenn die Technik klappt, weil sie ja wie gesagt, genau, könnte es sein. Genau, danke. Das ist für Ausstellung. Das ist ein Manhattan-Fotografie, das ist ein scheiß Foto. Das ist eine Mutter, ein Krokodil. So was Blödes. So was Blödes. Das ist Kunst. Das ist keine Kunst, ne? Das ist ein totaler Scheiß. Ne? Schau mal die. Für den Scheiß. Und der spinnt ja. Sohn? Sein Sohn? Das ist der Teller sein Sohn? Der spielt jetzt auch bei Bayern München? Das gibt's ja nicht. Das ist sein Sohn? Das gibt's ja gar nicht. Das ist das ist gemacht. Das ist der, das ist der Müller? Ein Mächtner. Der hat überhaupt keine. Der hat überhaupt keine Zähne nicht mehr. Der hat eine Zahnlücke. Angelotti, das ist Angelotti, das ist Angelotti. Der hat Augen, der Augen zu. Und. Ich 
Kate Moss. Und die hat man noch nie gefallen. Die, die wo man, ist doch gar nichts dran bei der. Im Stück kommt, weil die hier vorne steht. Total ist so ein Scheiß. So ein Scheiß. Und das ist er. Das gefällt mir. Das gefällt mir. Das ist ja der Schwarzenegger. Das ist ja der Schwarzenegger. Ein Krokodil. Also so was Scheiß. Ich schwarze ja ein Krokodil. Ja, was ist das? Was Schiffer, das ist, das ist so, so fotografieren das von dem. Das gibt's ja gar nicht. Das gibt's, dass die sich so fotografieren das. Schaut mal an, das ist ja halt immer, das schaut es mal an. Hier vor wieder, das hängt auf meinen Stift. Wunderbar. Ähm, doch, doch, Ton. Also, bevor jetzt eine, eine Videoübertragung beginnt, möchte ich kurz vorstellen, wiederum den Text vorlesen, mehr oder weniger. Äh, Retouch Stomach. Wir sehen jetzt ein Gespräch zwischen Deville Drigide und Jürgen Teller. Ziel dieses Gespräches zwischen den beiden, davon ist Jürgen Teller der bekannte Fotograf und Werbefotograf, ist eine Reflexion darüber, wie zutiefst schwarzer satirischer Humor, Neugierde und Selbstparodie in dessen Arbeiten mit hineinspielen und so für den Künstler wie auch für Modells und Prominente unerwartete, absurde Szenarien herbeiführen. Ausgangspunkt war und wird weiterhin sein, die Videoarbeit Dieter, in der er selber als sein alter Ego Dieter durch eine Ausstellung in Erlangen geht und sich quasi über das, was er produziert hat, 
ähm, ja nicht lustig macht, aber es ist als nicht Kunst, als ein Scheiß abtut. Ich selber kannte Dieter nicht, ich kannte die Fotoarbeiten von Jürgen Teller, die er als Editorial- und Werbefotograf gemacht hat, äh, war als Student zutiefst beeindruckt immer von dieser Freiheit, die sich dieser Erlanger nimmt in der großen Modewelt der Welt, nicht nur Londons, aber der weltweit und äh, wie er dann immer wieder äh, buchstäblich Bauchlandungen machte, also physische Bauchlandung mit sich selbst und mit den Models und darüber so eine Spannung innerhalb des Sujets erzeugte, die diese Schönheit der Repräsentation des Äußeren der Haut aufbrach und ähm, so ein bisschen äh, ja, der Bauch, also dieses, dieses Pücknische, dieses, dieses Körperdasein äh, hineinbrachte, was dieser Körperlosigkeit oder wenn dieser Astralität entgegenwirkte. Und wenn er jetzt als Dieter da durchschlurft, dann bin ich natürlich neugierig, was der für eine Rolle spielt in dem Ganzen und freue mich sehr auf das Gespräch zwischen den beiden und vielleicht auch auf das nachfolgende Gespräch mit uns. Und sage jetzt einmal, ich nehme an, ihr habt mich schon gehört, now in English. Hello Jürgen, hello Deville, I'm looking forward to hearing from you and seeing you talking soon, now. Ah, hi. Could you hear hello. me? Hello. Hello, Duvil. Hello, Jürgen. Could you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes. so everything is said from my side. Now it's your turn. Okay. You scared us for a moment. Why? That you were playing all the video. I, it was my first question to Jürgen, <laughs> explain the video. And then he says, no, this guy is explaining the video. <laughs> <laughs> no, did I explain it? Oh, sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> Nobody told me not to explain. I didn't explain it. I just told what I saw because I recognized you from other pictures. So just it's, to <laughs> it's not enough to wear a wig. You are still um, identifiable. But anyway, now it's your turn. I think it's okay. a conversation between you two. So I leave this place and return later on. Then we can see each other again. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. I will try to share our screen now. I hope you guys can see everything. Yeah, first of all, so very, very sorry that we couldn't uh, uh, come to Mannheim. Uh, was it Darmstadt? Mannheim? Darmstadt. Uh, Darmstadt. Uh, uh, we wish we could see you all. Yeah, uh, so very, very, very sorry about it. Anyway, let's start. Um, I think we're curious to know about this Dieter thing. And how did that come? And how did you do it? And why did you do it? Well, in a way, it's self-explanatory. <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh, such stupidity uh, we can't really uh, be well described. No, it, it, it was, uh, I, I got very nervous when I had this, when I got asked to do this, uh, I got really flustered about having this show at the Kunstpalais Erlangen. And if I, if, I had a, if I have a show in, in, in New York, London or Paris or anywhere, I, I'm, I'm nervous too, but I'm, but, I'm, but I'm precise of what I want to show and, and uh, work towards it. And, and uh, when, I agreed, when I agreed to do, I, I really liked the curator in, 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 at the Stadtpatelier in Erlangen. And, uh, and uh, I thought, well, but this is where I'm born. And of course, let's have a show. Then I didn't realize how big the space is. It's, it's like seven big rooms or something. And uh, not not big rooms, but seven rooms. So it's it's, it's a large, large large exhibition. And I wanted to, because it's where I'm coming from. I kind of wanted to put a lot of German things in it. And uh, and I got more and more nervous about it. And uh, and my mother said, "Cope me up, you know, you can't, uh, you know, you, you you can't put yourself naked in it and all these all these pictures and everything like that." And so don't embarrass the neighbors. Uh, yes, and she says, you know, <laughs> then, then I can't go to the to the to the butcher anymore uh, uh, because they're all, already looking at me in a funny way already. <laughs> uh, and I thought, oh my god, I can't show this, I can't show that, and uh, and I got uh, more and more nervous. It was it was, it was horrible, and uh, and then I uh, about two weeks before the opening, uh, my mom called me up again and says uh, all the. All the uncles and 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 aunts and 
family members and, and, and cousins and God knows what, they want to know what's, what's at the opening, what's there to eat. And I, <laughs> and I got really angry with my mom. And I'm thinking, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to show. I'm really nervous. I don't, I don't even know what I'm going to show. And it's two weeks. And she says, well, why are you nervous? But we just show you pictures of Claudia Schiffer and, and Kate Moss and, and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I was like, that can't be that obvious. Uh, and uh, I thought, well, okay, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of blocked myself completely. So I had a lot of German things in it and, and landscapes and my mother in it and everything else. And, and then I kind of got bored with it uh, and used my nervousness of, and I kind of just thought, oh my God, you know, this uncle and this person, they're gonna think my work's all completely stupid and they don't understand it. And I thought, hang on a minute, what, what can I do with this? And it's, and it's, and you have to go, uh, it's on two floors and you have to, uh, you look at the first floor and then uh, the ground floor and then you go downstairs and you have to go right to the last room and you have to back it, go back again. And I just thought, what would happen if I would be my alter ego or, or my, not existing brother or or if i would have not left germany uh who uh, would you be uh <laughs> and uh, who would i be you know would i be some kind of <laughs> loser from the franconian countryside uh that doesn't mean people are losers there uh <laughs> what I'm trying to say, it's like, and then I use Dieter, which is my middle name, which I always hated, what, this middle name of mine. And I thought, well, I'm going to be this uh, Birkenstock uh, self-knitted uh, uh, socks oh, kind so. of kind of guy with long hair and, 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 and uh, leather jacket uh, walking through my exhibition and thinking this is all shit. Uh, and I had a... a, a, a Took it in, 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 in one take, and it's at the end of the show. And uh, uh, the point of it was that I wanted to create something. I got bored with it, with with my with my own work, and and and, and you I got bored with yourself. And I wanted to do uh, something new for the show, and I came up with that video, and I thought it was really good. <laughs> what did the butcher think? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> now she's asking me to do another show. <laughs> Actually, in a 2022, 2022. Yeah, with, a, with a collaboration of other people's work and mine and everything. Well, like hopefully by then we will be able to see everyone. It's kind of weird to talk to everyone. We don't see you guys. It's strange, this technology. Yeah, bit. yeah. It's, uh... um, all right. Now everyone, I think, is seeing this funny picture. Uh... More and more, when t when digital photography in 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 in, in, com in commercial photography, uh, everybody thinks they are photographer now, and, and quite rightly so. You know, uh, that's fine, but everybody has their opinion, and everybody you know, and and you get these notes back when you when you're in commercial photography, you send it to the client, and and everybody wants to have this retouched and this retouched and and, uh, and and sort of endless. And it got so much on my nerve. Uh, there is a, there's a thing called uh, business of fashion, which talks about uh, fashion. It's a website, right? Uh, yeah. It's a website. It's a very sort of important website. And they did an interview with me and they asked for a self portrait. And I kind of, and that's what I came up with as a self portrait. And I kind of, uh, uh, make myself ridiculous really and uh, and it was on a set when i photographed kenya west and that was his uh, fur coat and uh, anyway let's move on okay so i mean i'm not sure easy. whether this is better which one is worse this one or this one <laughs> uh that's worse <laughs> i think that was i tend to photograph me uh i i tend to like to photograph me uh when i look the worst uh well, this will be Otherwise, hard to overcome, <laughs> something like that. And, and uh, there was a bloated moment for me when I kind of tend to go on certain benders and then I get healthy and things like that. Well, anyway, I, that, at, 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 we did a, I did a fashion story for British Vogue 
with Eva Herzegova. Uh, and she's been to my house 25 years ago when I also photographed her there. And, uh, and I went to the, my old, uh, how do you call it, children's room? And I found Fußball ist unser Leben. Football is our life. Is it? It's, 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 uh, it is, it is. Bayern Munich is against Frankfurt. Right Tuna now it's really a bad moment for and, Jürgen and because his team is playing and he was like, I don't want to do the stalk. I don't want to do the stalk. I just want to watch football. So he's maybe will put and, his eyes away. And Barcelona sure. is one, one all against Real Madrid. So Tell now us. we're coming to this stupid stupidity. I... I just thought I can't remember one what moment it, it, it happened when it was like the seven I think it was the seven times when Bayern Munich won uh, the Bundesliga and they always run around with this stupid ridiculous ugly beer terribly tasting vice beer and it's all money promotion and everything like that uh, And they run around and uh, pour it on your head. Pouring it on your head, and uh, and the racing drivers pour champagne over their head, and 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 Bayern Munich always with this Bavarian stupid vice beer. And I just thought uh, this is a horror show, and I kind of did it myself, and and uh, and uh, it was a, was a massive amount of uh, vice beer. I. Uh, Sweat my money on. <laughs> uh, anyway. So you kind of, humor for you is making fun of yourself. Well. The, Or what? Mm, well, it comes, it, 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 I think it was in 2000 when I started taking self-portraits, when, uh, when I photographed a French actress. And, uh, And, and I thought that, that, that was, it was super successful, the shoot. You know, I was really excited. She, she was really excited. And, and Who did she, you photograph? Uh, I don't want to say. Okay. It was just one, one was, a, was a very famous French actress. And, uh, and then she invited me back to Paris to go through the work and choose the pictures together and everything like that. And I thought, oh, you know, instead of just sending it, you know, you have a discussion and that this is really interesting. This is great. And... Uh, And and I, and and I took the Eurostar and went to Paris and uh, and I got invited to you know to her house, and and I, and I very politely asked whether I can smoke there and I smoked, and I had this box of photographs and opened up and she and she, and she said, and she looked at five pictures really quickly boom 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 there were more pictures uh, but after the fifth picture she literally kind of nearly threw me out of the window she was so. Uh, no, uh, out of the house, and uh, and she said, uh, "Jürgen, you, uh, this is absolutely horrific." Da, da 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 da, and you make me ten years older than I am. And I just thought, oh, "You stupid cow, you are, you think you're ten years younger." I mean, well, you know, and uh, and I got so depressed. And instead of going back to Paris, I booked myself in some cheap hotel and stayed there. Uh, and uh, called up my friend Charlotte Rampling and talked to her, her about the vanity of uh, women or of, of actresses of, of them. I didn't also tell her who, who, who it was. Anyway, the point, and the funny thing is, uh, a couple of years after, uh, she had a, she called me up and and she says, "Oh my God." I'm having this huge exhibition around the world and this picture, what you've taken, is I want to have, use as a poster all over the world and this is my favorite picture of all times and it's on the cover of her book. And I was like, what the fuck? Uh, so it takes a while till certain people see my work properly, I guess, or how do I put it? Anyway, but this is not quite the point. The point was, fuck it. Uh, I want to, I just start photographing myself and nobody's going to tell me how stupid I look or how pretty I look or how, how, what to do, you know, and, uh, and I'm always around. I don't have to go to Paris. Uh, I can photograph <laughs> myself always. Uh, That and sounds this... vain pretty much. Does it? Well, is it? What do you mean? What, what is vain? Photographing yourself. 
it has nothing no not at all it's it's for me it was all, it was this reason what i just told you and the second reason is uh i forgot it now i'm listening to the rain uh the second reason is that i it, 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 this might sound funny but i wanted to feel how it how it how it feels like to be photographed by me and i wanted to to literally learn about it how it is to be photographed by, by me and how is it that's <laughs> good <laughs> <laughs> i mean again uh well, wait a minute and and, uh, and 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 i really learned something you know i had i had like either had my neighbor in germany or my mother even photographing me and I, or my assistant it doesn't matter who it is i just direct them and it and it gives me an incredible idea about what the lens does and i say go a little bit higher go a little bit like this make sure you 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 you, you do it like this let you do it like this just cover it just in case horizontal up uh, an upright horizontal blah 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 and uh, and the way i pose the way i do things i know i know uh, I know immediately that that it works or it doesn't work. Very often it doesn't work. But, 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 uh, so, so anyway. So what can you so tell this, us about this pose exactly? <laughs> well, this pose was so tedious. It I had to do some advertising for these uh, ASIC shoes, Kiko Kostantinov, and and they paid me a lot of money for it. Actually, if you were laughing about it. They they paid me a lot of money to that I do self portraits. <laughs> so far, we've seen only you in these pictures. And uh, yeah, because I don't want to take fun of other people. I don't. I'm not mean. I always, for me, it's very important to be correct with people, and uh, and and I'm not laughing at them. You know, if I get them involved, I want to laugh with them. They have to. They have to be complete collaborators. I don't want to do things on the sly or do things like this. Anyway, it was it was we were going on holiday and I was schlepping these shoes. They were like four, four or five pairs, different pairs, and I just couldn't bear the idea of photographing myself. And I had no idea and everything. And this was right at the end of the holiday uh, in Italy. It reminded me of this film, this ghost of Fressen, the, the big feast or whatever it is. You know, we ate so much pasta, so much pizza, so much wine and everything like that. And, and, and I ended up like this. Uh, and I just thought, I, 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 I do it there, finished. No. But do you think... And it was like very it, successful. It, well, it was. It was. It was very good. It was really, it was well received. And the other pictures were really also in that funny direction. But I guess my question is, when you start taking pictures, like, you know... This was an advertising for Balenciaga. Um, but do you think, like, you actually think of making them funny? You try to put humor in? Or it just comes somehow? Sorry, say it again? Uh, do you try mm -hmm. to put humor in? You try to make it funny or somehow... Or it just happens. It's, it's, do you it's, it's think of different. making it funny? It, it's always different. It sometimes it comes out of a situation of desperation. Like here, I had to do some advertising for Balenciaga shoes, and I had this idea to go to this stupid outdoor gym. And I've been there before, and it was working really well, and. And it was just wasn't working. It just wasn't working. And I had a really famous model called uh, Stella Tennant, and then a, a really good writer who's doing the who, who was the the subject, the male model for this. And somehow I completely failed. And I had these great characters, but all I had to do was photograph these shoes, and the whole thing I just couldn't do it. It was painful. Uh, I suffer a lot when I photograph and. So you decided to photograph yourself again. <laughs> and, and I thought, and, and I just thought, this is so difficult. How do I photograph a shoe? And with these thoughts, I thought the stronger thing was, this, these shoes drive me crazy. I don't know what to do with these shoes. And I thought, if this shoe is uh, stepping on my 
face people that is think good. Is good. <laughs> I don't I don't care what people think. <laughs> uh, I, I I care what the client thinks. Uh, I, I, mostly, if I'm happy, the client is happy. And this is blast from the past, I think. That's a long time ago. Uh, I think uh, we have a couple of those. Not that you can see; it's a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, I've worked for Mark, with Mark Jacobs for seventeen years. You were that old, Jesus. What? <laughs> uh, I worked with him for, for uh, collaborated with him for seventeen years, and uh, uh, and and sometimes he had an idea of who to choose, which are friends of his or friends of mine or people we admired. And, and it might have been uh, Kim Gordon from Sonic Youth or, or uh, you know, he asked me, and then we used Charlotte Rampling, William Eggleston, uh, lo lo lots different of, kind characters. of different characters. And then, and then he said, hey, what about, uh, I just bought some work of, of Cindy Sherman and, uh, and, and, and I really like her and I met her and everything. Why don't you photograph Cindy Sherman for our fashion campaign. And I just, I, could, I had to think, you know, I had to like, of course, uh, this is brilliant. Of course, I, of course, I have to photograph her. But it, immediately, I thought, well, what the, what, what can I do? This is, uh, uh, she can do it much better herself. You know, she is, she is working. Uh, she did a couple of campaigns or before and she is always involved with costumes in one way or another and 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 with self portraits and everything mm -hmm. what what can i what can i bring in on, on the table you know if i just photograph her, her dressing up that's so stupid and i've been thinking, again you bring yourself in no well well i was thinking would there has to well first of all i'm very good when i do portraits with eye contact there's a lot of eye contact and I'm always very direct. And I looked at looked at the film stills she did, and things. And a lot of times, nearly all the time, she's looking over here, over here. She never looks. There's nothing direct about this. Uh, and I thought, well, this is good. I'm thinking, no, this is not enough. And I just realized she's always on her own, always on her own. And I thought, I need an actor. And I thought of actor number one, actor number B. Uh, and I thought, nah, this is, this, I'm not quite sure. Uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure. This is just, you know, da, 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 da. this is not the right actor and what I'm going to do and everything. And I just thought, it's got to be me. <laughs> of course. Uh, Who else? And, uh, and there you are. And there I am. We had a lot of fun. And, and how uh, direct is this? How, how about eye contact here? Can you explain to us this eye contact? Well, this was another Mark Jacobs <laughs> advertising, and it says when you can read Victoria Beckham photographed by Jürgen Teller. Uh, this was quite famous, I guess. This picture. They what would call only it, this? They would call it <laughs> iconic, I think, or something like that. Uh, uh, so it was always like uh, William Eggleston photographed by Jürgen Teller. Or, Victoria back, so you, you always always read it, and there was pre uh, mobile phones, pre social media, and all this crap, you know. Uh, and it was it was magazine based advertising uh, all over the world, and and it, this had a huge impact. It was at the time when when she wasn't being taken serious at all, <laughs> uh, Victoria Beckham, in terms of. Uh, her fashion interest she started having interest in fashion and everybody thought it was it was, was was a joke and uh and mark she was at the mark jacobs fashion show which was which was in the fashion calendar in new york a very big deal and she was there in the first row and everybody thought from the press what the hell is she doing here and uh and mark called me uh called me up on the same night and says i've got this genius idea what do you think about Victoria Beckham in the campaign? And she was always, and our campaigns, they were, if I may say so, always the cool people, uh, musicians, artists, actors, actresses, 
and so on and so on. And and she was not quite in that field. You know? Right, right. Uh, 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 and, uh, but it was successful. Well, well, no, and that, and, and I thought, oh my god, and I thought, genius idea, this is brilliant. Why not David? Because of the women's <laughs> campaign. <laughs> it's a women's campaign. And uh, now, wait a minute, wait a minute, and then, and where was I now? And uh, and I just thought, oh my god, how am I going to photograph her? It was in Los Angeles, uh, and. And I said, oh my God, she is a product. She, Victoria Beckham is just a product. And, uh, and she packages herself and, and, uh, and, uh, and I just thought, I'm going to build a huge shopping bag and put her in it. Go back. Uh, and, and, and put her in it. And the, most interesting thing about Mark's collection, I, my personal opinion, was those shoes, and uh, and if it's if I put her in this in this bag and underneath it says Victoria Beckham photographed by Jürgen Teller and she's just a product, uh, and also fashion designers, uh, they sell handbags, fucking handbags, 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 or perfume, uh, and not so much their fashion, uh, which you know. I, I, it was very much important for me this this product thing, and, and of course I can't arrive in LA and 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 say, hey Victoria, just why don't you just jump into this stupid bag? This is going to be great. I don't even want to see it. Did she find this funny? Did you? Did you? <laughs> did you, <laughs> did she you don't. Find even, this did you, you don't even have to see you. I don't even want to see your face. I mean, that would be ridiculous, right? Uh, she would never do it. Uh, we obviously so you just, tricked her somehow. no i didn't trick her at all i discussed it way before she wanted to have she has all these you know lawyers and uh, business managers and everything like that to to give to give photo approval and uh <clears throat> faster uh, uh to give photo approval. and i said hey listen uh, i'm not gonna give her uh I'm not going to give you photo approval. I'm going to show you Polaroids. I'm going to tell you exactly what you're going to do and how it's going to look like. But I'm not going to give you photo approval. I, I don't do this. And uh, which, which, which brings us to another problem of celebrities. That's, that's all they want to do. Have, have photo approval. Anyway, so I... And then Mark said, hey, called me and says, I've spoken to her. I've spoken to her. She is demanding photo approval. Can you not just call her, explain her the whole thing, and just charm her on the telephone? So I had to call her. I had to call her in LA, and uh, and and I explained everything. And and of course, I'm playing with the vanity of people. Uh, that for her, it was very important to be in that in to be associated with an extremely. Uh, important fashion designer and to be in these ads all these ads were very iconic uh, uh, for 17 years and uh, uh, and we had because we had a lot of freedom to do things and uh, and I knew she's gonna say yes because because of the vanity of her just to be associated with this thing and it helped her a hell of a lot and uh, now you can do this next thank you and uh, and then again, you throw yourself in there. Well, and then ten years, and then she 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 started her fashion business, very successful, and and uh, has very good critics and is very good. And everybody was pretty much surprised how great she was and in how 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 good she is. And for her anniversary of her of her company of her brand uh, for 10 years she asked me to redo the pictures for her campaign and i just thought i overtop it for and you another, can't help yourself and you slide one. yourself in the picture well i thought it was funny there you go so there we have a uh, we'll, we'll 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 do this portion a bit Maybe faster. faster if Jürgen will not speak so much. I think it would be helpful. Well, um, let me but check there, the But there's series, uh, 
series of uh, tell us about this series just don't speak maybe about every picture oh, but, sure new. but if you could concentrate mm -hmm. but if you could tell us more about this uh, this this project that you did and where was it done and, and why is this all about women and femininity because it's it, it's the, there's a magazine something. called it's a magazine called self wait a minute it's a magazine called self-service and uh, they were asking women to uh, and this new uh, and this issue it celebrates femininity and female empowerment because we love women i just thought how strange is that and then they ask the stylist the stylist to answer the, these questions uh, how do you deal with creativity in relation to the necessities of the business? How do you? And, and, <laughs> and they were so stupid, these questions. I said to the stylist, you know what? We're going to fire back this. Uh, we, we, we're going to fire back this, these, these, these. You don't even have to answer these questions. I'm going to write them in it. So you don't even have to ask. The, uh, and then I wrote myself a couple of more stupid questions. Anyway, this is maybe a bit too long and too complicated. No, but I think it also, you know, why did you decide to include this in the presentation or talk about this? Why, why is it important to you? I mean, it is quite funny. But also, I think it's very your, it's very you, these pictures. And there is a lot of humor and sort of awkwardness. Like, you don't do yoga like that. What do you mean? Not really. No. <laughs> but what is it, you know, what is it? For you, what does it mean? Would you say this is really your pick? Like, do these pictures describe you well? It your work. Yeah. But let's move on. This is also stupid. This is football. This is football. Yeah. Okay. Carry on. And how, all the is... clothes, all this, the, the stylists came along with all these. Uh, how do you call it sportswear stuff and things like that and and there was at the time at the world cup or or so, no, no or something yeah it was the world yeah cup, yeah, yeah yeah uh it does uh, this is like nemo uh, and uh but there is a lot of humor really in the pictures a lot of them you know it's kind of wanted to you know that's nemo again that's nemo <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I find, look at this, the sun, right? As three lions face nation that gave world Shakira, great coffee and air stuff. Go cane, go cocaine, go cane. <laughs> but it is, I mean, it's it does come across as a lot of humor in your in Because I, I find, you know, I, you know, this pretentiousness of people and the seriousness what? Uh, uh, I find very, you know, like, like I, t I, I don't know, I want to have, a, I don't want to take myself so seriously, uh, uh, even though I take myself extremely seriously and, and, and work really hard at things. I, I just want, also want to have fun with things and I want to take the, I don't know. Was, he, he, was Kanye and Kim funny? Well, they weren't funny at all. Uh, they take themselves extremely serious. And uh, so there's Kim, and then she lies on the ground, and Kanye uh, styles her, totally like, you know, like a doll, and uh, uh, really meticulously. And then he says, oh, Kim, this is how to work with three A-listers. And I was like, what's he talking about? And, and, he, and he said, Kim, you, Jürgen, and me, the God, or something. And, and then I was like, oh, me. So I thought, ooh, let's, let's, let's. Again, you're in the pictures. Let's, let, let, I let, think let, it's I need to, and, and then I kind of want to. Really from this really self-promotion, this presentation. What do you mean self-promotion? I had, I should have looked at it before. It's all about you. 
what are we talking about? <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to, because they, they take themselves so seriously and then they retouching and then this and then that and then da 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 da. And I just thought, I just want to be as stupid in this countryside as possible. Uh, yeah. And where did you shoot this? In some chateau in somewhere in France. And what did they think? Did they find it funny? What they did they find, <laughs> they did find it funny? And tell us more. They actually killed this whole thing. They wanted to have it never be seen in in in. This is too long the story to explain, but uh, but now they liked it. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I had to. I was very, you know, I was like, I was interested. I'm thinking, oh my god, it's all about that bum. Uh, and uh, I thought, oh, okay, I was asking, can I touch your bum? And she said, yeah, of course. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, Ooh. and and I thought, this is quite a bum. Uh, and uh, I just thought this is this outfit. That's what it is. Outfit here, and we're here in this. Uh... Actually, we were in this chateau, and the chateau was too nice. The garden was too nice. I'm thinking this is rolling into a bit of a Wrong boring, direction. boring uh, 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 scenario. It looked like a, a sort of a chalet garden where they would have might get married or or something, and and, and, and over the hedge. There was this shitty field with this with this hill, sand hill, and I just thought, I'm also interested how to, how, you know, it's amazing what you what what you can do with a camera. What what you what what you could just ask someone to do something and they do it. It's crazy. Otherwise, people would think you're nuts. Uh, I don't think we ever seen her crawling like that. No, I was interested in that. And how to make that most out of that bump. You definitely and, did. And then I just ask, Kim, could you crawl up that sand hill in high heels? Yeah, of course, you. <laughs> I was like, well, and I like that. It's just the way you are, how charming you are, and that people do all sorts of things you wouldn't believe. So you just charm them all up. Yeah. That seems to be working. Mm. Are we done? I think so. I think that's all that we wanted to share with you guys. And I believe that now we have some be, question and answers. Um, Q and A is cool. I think it will be some Q and A type now. Oh, nice! Thank you. We heard a clap. Did you mm. hear a clap? Mm. That was not, nice. No, not anymore. That was a small clap. I think we can probably. Probably do this. Hi. Huh. Ah. Thank you. Thank you very much. So Q and R. Who is? Are there any how, many, how, how many people are actually in this room? Um, a lot actually for the situation in Darmstadt. I can count three, five, eight, nine, eleven, fourteen, seventeen, twenty, three, thirty. Almost 50 people. Wow. Right. That's we really a lot. Love to be there. Yeah. yeah. Actually, um, we miss you somehow. The physical presence is definitely different. Yeah, no, completely. For sure, completely. for sure. Completely. I can see you. I can't see you now. That's really strange because I see myself on the screen and you're gone. Ah, you're back again. Um, so you can see me in the small screen, I guess. Yes. Yes, I think that's you. fine because the public can see me sitting here and I would like to see you while we are talking or maybe somebody else want, wants to ask a question. But there is mainly silence. So um, I have a question. Um, why do you want to retouch your stomach? It's beautiful. Why do I? What? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a comment on... on, on yes. I don't want to retouch my stomach at all. Uh, uh, but but uh, uh, this was a this was a, a work I did to 
to make it ridiculous how much requests you get from people to to retouch, uh, to retouch you know this mm -hmm. this you know, close close and make myself thinner you know eyebrow thicker nose better blah 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 it was endless requests since this whole it 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 got worse and worse when 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 digital took over more and more you know and uh, uh, so that's why so uh, you stay as you are because i think i think Deville just said it to the end um, you you are charming i think that's the point where you get the people and um, a part of it is your stomach probably i would say <laughs> could be a bit smaller yes Very. why <laughs> I mean, it's nice to touch like a, huh? it could be the same, yes. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> um, when I saw your oh. video, Dieter. <laughs> no, when, I, when, I was, when I was Dieter, I had this idea yeah. and I uh, uh, literally, it, it, I was there a week before installing the show also to see my mother and, 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 and things like that. And then I had this idea a week before the show and I thought, oh my God, I'm doing this Dieter thing and uh, I'm a little bit in too, too good of a shape. And I literally ate and drank so much in this week and I really, I-, I, I Expanded. I, I expanded, <laughs> you know, like, it's like method acting. And, and I wanted really like this uh, and not, and, and that's what I did. So I, 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 I ate a hell of a lot and drank a lot of beer, which I normally don't really do. Yeah, there is a, there is a, because I mentioned when I introduced you and it was more by intuition, but the picnic type uh, is a body type and it I just translated as picnic, the picnic type is a medium sized stocky build tendency towards fat deposits, chest wider at the bottom than at the top, short neck <laughs> and broad face. That's temperament. Of <laughs> Sorry, it's just the translation by Google. Maybe it's not the perfect one. Temperament, sedate, cozy, kind-hearted, sociable, cheerful, comfortable, satisfied, lively to heated, or also quiet and soft, which is the part I like most, the end. I mean, the body <laughs> description might fit or not. But uh, so my first uh, idea was a refusal. Don't retouch your stomach. And um, the next <laughs> point was... Um, Maybe the question, how much from Dieter is yourself? I mean, you said it yourself, if I had a brother or if I would have grown up in that situation, how much of Dieter are you? Oh. Nothing. No. <laughs> <laughs> you refuse. Uh, all, I, all I can say is, uh, well, that I am, I am still very, uh, how do I say, uh, uh, ho uh, home verwurzelt. Uh, you know, I, I, I still, uh, I'm very, very fond of, 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 of my family in, in Germany, my mother, and, uh, and, and, and I go there as, as, as much as I can, and, and, and I also took on a, uh, 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 a professorship uh, for five years at the Kunstakademie der Bildenden Künste, yeah. uh, and that was that was uh, I enjoyed that very much. And I and I, and I stayed with my mother. She she drove me in the morning to school to the uni, <laughs> and uh, and it was very funny, you know. And we 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 heckled like uh, like uh, and I thought, oh my god, why do I do this to myself? Why don't I stay in Nuremberg in a hotel? And we, you know, you argue in the morning when she drives me to school, and I'm thinking, oh, this is just ridiculous. Uh, so I am a little bit. That's a bit of Dita there. Yeah. In a way. I think the uh, moment. But, but I, I it, also like I, you know, like the people ask me about this going around the world in all these metropolitans or being on a on a on a. On a on a yacht or, or doing this or that, you know, I I I, I didn't get uh, eaten up by this uh, by this celebrity bullshit and, and and things like that. You know, my feet are solidly on the ground and uh, and uh, I, I live a, a simple life. Oh, listen <laughs> to you. 
<laughs> I don't know, you know. Now there was one moment when you, uh, one p picture you like, the one of the orchestra, you said, das mag ich oder so. This is good. Right. So there uh, was this, uh, this um, let's say, aesthetic socialization for a moment. This very you straight. See, well, you see, because this was the only safe picture, yeah. you know, it's a, you know, and, and, uh, and of course I come from a, uh, from a family of, uh, uh, music, uh, m uh, instrument, instrument makers. Uh, I used to be a bow maker for the, for the violins, the bows mm. and, uh, and my, my, uh, family's side, they do the bridges. They were, they are bridge makers. And my, un my other uncle was a guitar maker and the other one a violin maker. So that, that, that's where it comes from. Ah. And, and uh, the, 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 the Bamberger Symphonica, they invited me to go with them on a, on a Korea, uh, uh, Japan tour. And they called me up out of the blue whether I'm interested in, in, in doing that. And, uh, and it was, a, and, a, and you know, I didn't earn any money for, for, uh, at all. Uh, nothing, but I, I was very interested in, in, in listening to this uh, classical music and travel with them through Japan and Korea. And, uh, and, 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 and I was with them for two and a half weeks and photographed them and photographed the, the, the place and everything. It was, it was an excellent experience for me mm -hmm. and to kind of thing. And it got me out of the house, not always photographing stupid handbags. It was good. Yeah, photographing yourself, <laughs> photographing some other people. Oh, wait, for I, change. Did, I did photograph myself <laughs> in there too. Yeah, this is an interesting uh, point for me too. Uh, but maybe I'm taking something wrong because when you're staging yourself in your photographs, this is not Dieter at all. This is you, in a way. This is, yeah, 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 this is me. So, yeah, yeah. so this is not, you're not trying to escape from yourself because that was the moment when you defined Dieter as somebody who could maybe help you to get over the no nervosity and, and the anxiety, not only presenting at a museum, but at your hometown. So a sort of double, double bind for you, like a super dilemma. I have to yeah. show my parents at a museum what is almost as art. And finally, it's me, um, Jürgen, Dieter Teller. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, well, I, I, oh, yeah, also like, you know, my, I, I really don't come from a cultured background and, uh, I did, did this series called Irene im Wald, which is, which is my mum in the forest because we live just right next to the forest and under is a, is a series of, uh, 28 photographs or 32 or 30, 34 photographs. I can't, it's a, it's a, it's a series, her walking in the forest and underneath and, and pictures of the forest and underneath I have, I have, uh, I've written a story on, on, under under each each picture, and uh, and my mom doesn't really take me serious in a way. Uh, <clears throat> you know, if I would be a dentist, she would be take me. She would be like taking me to totally serious. You know, she like, okay, I'm doing this tooth and da 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 da. And I me mean, as a photographer, it's like photographing her was very difficult, but I was very intrigued, and she's a, also a very good subject. Anyway, so I'm t I'm doing this over a long period of time. And it also brought me closer to my mom going on these walks and things like that. So anyway, I called up my mom and says, and I ex exhibited, I, 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 showed, I showed it in various shows and in various museums. And, and I had this great news to my mom, the uh, Pompidou bought the series of work for X amount of money. And she's like, what? That stuff? So I was one, was one did I mean so I'm sorry. And what do they, what do they want with this crap? You know, and I was like, why are they paying so much money? Uh, but I don't want to like ridiculous my mum now, uh, but it's, that's how, 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 how far away it is, you know, that to, uh, but I don't know where I'm going with this conversation. I don't know either, I'm just anyway. listening. <laughs> uh, uh, I, yeah, and I lost it now, anyway. Let's carry on. Ask me another. <laughs> Let's carry on. Uh, yeah. What does your mother think? I mean, you're making yourself to a, to a joke when you stand on this uh, level with these shoes and making money out of that. Still, where are you? Ah. ah. <laughs> 
You're coming and going and I see the I audience twice on a picture and in... Ah, now you're back again. Great. Yep. So, um, in case you didn't get it, um, you're, you're making yourself to a joke, to a clown, to a nar, and still making money out of it. What does it tell about your role, in a way, your role as Jürgen Teller, the photographer, the artist, the one who can do that? Because if I would stand on a level with these shoes and even, even better photographed, nobody would be interested. No. <laughs> 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 Very honest answer. Uh, it it comes out of a, you know, it, I have a, I have a, I, I, you know, I have a wide spectrum of things. You know, I I, I take very serious photographs, and, and and uh, and sometimes I take humorous photographs. But this this whole talk I thought was about human photography. That's why I've chosen all this stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Or tragic photographs too, and beautiful <laughs> ones. And uh, but anyway, so it, there's a. Uh, it comes out of you know with, with, with the Balenciaga with the shoes. It, it, it in a way it comes out of a desperation where I, I, failed with my original idea. Uh, how I wanted to photo them, photograph them in, in this outside gym, and 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 the weather was not good, and you couldn't see the clothes, clothes uh, the shoes so well, and things like that, and. And it's very uh, and it's about with a, doing an impact with an with an advertising, right? You have to have an impact, and you, and I always show product. I always show the clothes, or or if I photograph a, a car, I'm not going to photograph a tree, you know. I it's and, and I, I photograph the car in the best possible way for me. I can photograph this car, or whatever it is, you know. So so uh, in, in a uh, and, and I find a lot of other fashion photographers, they don't really photograph the fashion so well. And I always, photo, for, for, I always photograph the, the, the fashion. But that's, that's the main bit that, that these komische uh, shoes, sandale, sports shoe, Balenciaga shoe, uh, that you really see what the hell is this product. And, and it, it's, it shows the honest and I'm also very honest, I think, within my work. Uh, uh, my, my honest struggle in this photograph is that I couldn't find a way of how to photograph the shoe in a good way. <clears throat> uh, and that's why I'm sort of uh, in this ridiculous, stupid way uh, trying to you know that, that I'm in it. It had an it had this Im it had an impact, mm. and so that's what that's what that was. And do you like this? Yeah, then, then of course I'm thinking, oh my god, you know, I'm getting a bit nervous. I'm thinking, what, what what the fuck is the client gonna think about this when I see when I give him this picture? You know, mm. but they liked it. <laughs> they seem to like it. It's part of the story in a way. Otherwise, they wouldn't have they wouldn't have run. You know, they would have yeah. killed it. So one last question, because still nobody else wants to ask question, would be not the last question I want to ask you, but the last question for tonight, because I would like to talk longer, anyway. But not in that situation. So, you you uh, regret not having been able to come to Darmstadt, and my question before we had this day was, why why does Jürgen Teller wants to come to Darmstadt? What would be your motivation? I would. Uh, what, uh, can you tell me? Well, or do we? Well, maybe even better. All you two no, together. No, no, I, I want to. All about me. <laughs> <laughs> She's gone already. <laughs> ah, no. <laughs> no, in, 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 no, in, in, in truth, I am very comfortable and interested in smaller places. In, I, I feel very comfortable in, in unexciting places, let's say. And I don't know whether Darmstadt is exciting or not or anything. <laughs> what, what, I'm, what I'm saying is I, I, I don't have to be in New York or here or in LA or anything. In some uh, boring place, I feel very happy. You can find, uh, I like, in a way, I, I like it everywhere. You know, I, it's not, 
oh, this is, you know, I come from Frankenland, you know, middle Franken. In a way, it's super boring in a way, but I like all this kind of, I like it everywhere. You know, I don't have to be sitting in the Grand Canyon and thinking, oh, this is nice. You know, you f find nice things everywhere. And whether it's a, a boring bar, you can have a good life there. You can have conversations with someone or it doesn't have to be a grand disco or anything. You know, I, I, always, I like it everywhere. And I think this is a good attitude to have. And, and I feel very comfortable in, in, in smaller cities. I like it. I always get a bit intimidated by Berlin, mm. believe it or not, or something like that. Uh, I, I would, I, I, I'm interested to come in, into Darmstadt. That's why I, that's, uh, that's yeah. why I said yes. I, 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 I feel very happy there, hopefully. <laughs> so one more pity that you, both of you didn't come, but maybe there will be another occasion. <laughs> It's, yeah, I would be very, invite me again. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I would be, it, it's, we, we, at the moment, we, 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 we want to be away from people as much as possible and yeah, we don't travel. Yeah. But, uh, so probably in this room are more people than everywhere else in Darmstadt um, together in one room because we mm. are so far it from a lockdown. And... No. Um, it's probably a good yeah. idea not to come now, but for next time, which oh. hopefully comes. We have, a, uh, we have a school for photography in Darmstadt, so that was my idea why you might have been interested too, as you've been teaching in Nuremberg for a while and somehow had interactions with students, and right. Right, right, right. which yeah. I think is a quite interesting part of your work. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Thank you very uh, much, Jovir, like and you. Thank you for having us. It was us. a pleasure having you here somehow, very big, very small. Yeah, and uh, we, we are going to have a small like get-together of the two physical present people from the panel for today, from the uh, symposium, which are Kevin and Sophie. Uh, soll ich gleich so weitermachen, Albrecht? Ach so, ja, aber gab ja bisher keine. Oder gibt es jetzt plötzlich Fragen? <laughs> then, um, also there were more than these two people, but they were the only physical uh, right. presentations. And Sophie, Kevin, and I, I've been asking us already what could we contribute now to uh, with a final group situation to the symposium, which was already quite long, but not too long, actually. I didn't find it quite, I didn't find it exhausting. I was surprised. So it's good to <laughs> talk sometimes. Um, and what we also said, I think that was an interesting point, which made me thought, think that it might be a good occasion to whatever I try to talk about. Um, Sophie, I think you said it's very diverse. So each of the presentations is completely different to the other. So when you see, uh, Sophie is the one there, and then uh, now the camera is turning a little bit to the <laughs> to the left. So there is another person, which uh, is Kevin. So they were the two reference from more the theoretical side of humor. Ah, this is a good image. I like this one. You okay. <laughs> um, so uh, this diversity made it quite interesting for me. I, I started, I, I, I'm completely not, uh, so in my work, I'm completely humor free. So usually I'm not humorous when I'm working. Besides of that, I try to laugh sometimes. Um, and I learned a lot about humor. And uh, one, another time that I quote you, it's not <laughs> deliberate, <laughs> it's just by accident, no. You said, and I, uh, there have to be, a, es muss ein Einverständnis, ein Konsens geben über den jeweiligen Humor. You have to find a consent, what you're laughing about, before you laugh about, and if you can laugh about. And uh, that, I think, goes through all the, all the presentations, in a way. So f starting from the meme, you have to find an audience who is um, amused. <laughs> uh, 
and and then from the I can't see you any longer from the fashion photography you have the same problem are you still there Jürgen Ach so, die sind gerade wirklich weg. Okay. Nicht nur. <lacht> anyway, ich kann ja. Äh, soll ich jetzt auf Deutsch wechseln? Weil sowieso. Ja? Okay. Ähm, vielleicht können wir damit ja was anfangen. Also diese, diese Frage, wie schafft man überhaupt einen Raum für Humor? Also ein Raum heißt ähm, eine, eine physische. Größe, in der sich Personen befinden, die einen Konsens haben dazu. Magst du vielleicht was dazu sagen? Also ich glaube, das passt äh, gerade bei dem Internet-Meme-Thema natürlich sehr gut. Ähm, wenn man sich zum Beispiel die Praxis des Trollings anguckt, ich weiß nicht, ob Leuten das bekannt ist, aber sozusagen ähm, die darum geht, so Kommunikation zu zerstören, im Endeffekt durch humoristische Art und Weise, und äh, guckt man sich solche Späße in Anführungszeichen an, sind die für Out Outsider gar nicht verständlich. Also es ist wirklich sehr schwierig, in diese Kultur auch zum Teil einzusteigen und bestimmte Memes zum Beispiel auch zu verstehen, ähm, weil das einfach ähm, so spezialisiert ist und ähm, Nuancen hat, die man dann nicht versteht zum Beispiel, ähm, dass man wirklich da eigentlich Forschung betreiben muss, um da einzusteigen oder sozusagen... Ähm, zumindest Teil der Kultur muss man irgendwo auch werden, wenn man äh, das untersuchen will, glaube ich. Also ähm, es ist einfach, also da hast du recht, da würde ich dir auch zustimmen, eben Humor setzt voraus, dass natürlich der, ähm, das Gegenüber den Humor auch versteht. Und das, das passiert natürlich dann bei so speziellen Humor ähm, sehr schnell, dass man das missversteht. Ähm, ich, äh, hört ihr mich alle? Ja? Ähm, ich ich führe das mal weiter fort, weil... Ich glaube, das Schöne ist, was wir heute auch gemerkt haben, ist einerseits genau das, was du auch in deinem Vortrag gebracht hast. Also es gibt bestimmte Wissenskulturen, die man mitbringen muss, um Humor zu verstehen. Und das andere ist, dass man aber auch Humor nutzen kann, um Wissen zu generieren. Also es geht sozusagen in beide Richtungen. Und ähm, das, ja, das, das finde ich ganz interessant. Und ähm, genau, wir hatten es in der Kaffeepause darüber, dass... Ähm, dass die Beiträge sehr divers sind und verschiedene Themenbereiche auch abdecken. Und das zeigt auch noch einmal, dass ähm, Humor nichts ist, was man eigentlich runterbrechen kann auf eine Definition, sondern äh, es kommt immer auf den Kontext an, in dem er generiert und rezipiert wird. Also nehmen wir... Ah, Erik. Sorry, we somehow forgot you. <laughs> in the, it's in everyone. The digital, it's everyone lost. at the moment. Ah, you wow. See everyone is wow. Naomi. Hello. Great. Perfect. This is the other room. This is the room they've been talking about. Now you're all there. Sorry, we had the most of the discussion is already through. <laughs> no, it was about uh, the, the question f or like the the. The premise of, of humor has to be a consens about something which could be funny or something you could laugh together with. As we know, humor always means interaction between people. You can be, okay, there's a sort of self-humor, but <laughs> I leave you alone with that. Uh, and, and that this construction needs uh, an agreement, a social agreement. A social consent, could say. And um, now, as we are a very diverse group of reference, and as we saw really, at least those who are there, very diverse presentations, um, it also seems to be, to me, it seems to be that things can be humorous, but they can also be not humorous, the same thing. So if you, I see Naomi very large at the moment and she's wearing a dress and, okay, apart from the heart, but the rest of the dress is in many cultural situations is absolutely not funny. It's a sort of a traditional dressing that you wear it makes it funny. 
So, and we start maybe laughing or smiling at least because we have this agreement that could be a humorous connotation. But as soon as you find it in Bavaria on any larger traditional party, it's not about laughing. Maybe some people laugh because they have fun, but not because you were wearing this dress. And uh, the same, uh, on the same, but in a, on a different level is, uh, you said, <laughs> again, you said a quote, <laughs> Krieg is nicht witzig. War is not funny at all. There is nothing funny at w in war. About war. About war, not in. And still, people create, are able to create a distance or create a situation where there is a humorous view on some aspects on war, of war. Or if we now in this pandemic situation, and you sit in your video rooms, we sit. Uh, um, with masks in a room far from each other. This is not funny. But still we are able to see funny connotations and, and um, we humble, mumble behind our mask or having fun. And this is, I think, a very, very human, uh, I mean, humor is human, humor, 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 is a very, um, that's, a, uh, that's a power, I think. Uh, I I think we could see it very nicely uh, with Naomi's work um, yeah. that, so Naomi, you um, showed us these uh, very interesting photographs of like how cultures ad adopt other cultures and how they, why ever they are trying to, yeah, invent themselves in these other cultures and I think uh, humor was a very good and perfect instrument to showcase exactly these dynamics, these cultural dynamics. So I, it, it's a strategy to sharpen maybe things which are going on in the world. Uh, can you, Naomi, we cannot hear you. Still not hearing you. Is it, is it somewhere on our side? Eric, we cannot hear we you. We cannot hear you. The zoom uh, is failing at the moment. There is no sound. We can see you perfectly, but can't hear you all. Mm -mm. But it's interesting. You're doing interesting thing with your finger. You can write it down in the chat and we can Oh yeah, just write it. Yeah. <laughs> Should I log off and log back in? Maybe, question to the technique. He, he is not responding, we yeah. don't know. Ah. No. No. We still cannot hear you. So this is a classic <laughs> lock. Oh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You can hear Naomi, what does she say? <laughs> you can hear her too. Mm. Wow, yes. so oh, we are locked in two rooms. No, I There's think we can hear them now. What? No, I, I think I heard them. No. No. So there are two rooms. The one, the... the oh, yes, yes. Ah, oh, yes, now. No. Yeah. Hello. So. Ah. <laughs> it's like the Verizon commercial. Can you hear me now? Um, so I don't even remember what we were talking about. Ah. Uh, <laughs> um, first of all, I dress like this every day. This is not a costume. This is me. I'm going to take my dog for a walk after in this. So that's okay. good. And I let people know I'm single all the time because, okay. you know, when lockdown, we got to hook up, right? Um, yeah, in terms of my pictures, I mean, this project's funny, I guess, but like not hit yourself over the head funny, but just subtle funny. But I think as a photographer, all my work is always a little bit funny. Like when I photographed 20 years ago, old people in Miami, I photographed it in color and with flash to make them look poppy and happy. And even when there are situations that were sort of sad, I still look for the humor in it. And that's just who I am. I'm a funny person. <laughs> um, and I think I share that with Jürgen and Eric. And I'm sorry, I didn't hear the panels earlier, but I'm sure you're also really got funny people. And I think some people are just born with that 
wanting to entertain, if you will. And just, mm. it's it comes through in our work, whether we're shooting something serious or not. Like I've photographed Holocaust survivors before, but the pictures are still kind of funny. Cause they're, you know, I don't want to show the sad parts of life. I want to show humor. There's let the photojournalists and the people who go to wars show, shoot the, uh, the sad and the, the morose. Mm. Let's, we're, we're going to keep the world laughing. Mm. Well said. Thank you. And I'm so sad that I'm not meeting you guys. Like when I heard about this, I was so excited to meet. I mean, Eric and I go way back, but I would love to have met you, Jurgen. So oh, when did maybe when yeah. we can fly again? <laughs> yeah, yeah, good, good, good. Genau, genau. Genau. I haven't left my house in since March 13th, except to go grocery shopping, essentially. Really? Where, where, where is it? Where are you? I'm in Toronto. Oh, okay. But we're taking, I mean, I'm also caregiving. My father just passed away a couple of uh, months ago, but, you know, I've been taking care of both my parents, and so I'm taking this super seriously. I'm not. Of course. You have to. You know, mm -hmm. And I'm actually in grad school right now in the U.S., but I have not gone because I'm not going anywhere near America. Right, yeah, no. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> Very fun conversation. Huh? <laughs> Let's talk about Trump. <laughs> See how funny that is in 10 days. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Let's see who's going to be laughing last. <laughs> Yeah. But the thing is, you know, we are all laughing at America and like how crazy they are. Has anyone seen Borat yet? I hear it's amazing. No, I haven't yet. No, no. I'm it's looking on forward now. to it. Yeah, I want to watch that. I hear it's yeah. terrific. Yeah. But here's the thing, like we laugh at America, but we are all affected by who they vote next. So like we can't be laughing. Yeah, like, of, course, of course, of course, of course. So it's it's, <clears throat> it's it's great having you all on video discussing with each other, uh, telling your stories. It's um, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I wonder if some of uh, the audience, some people maybe um, would like to join uh, for that. Like maybe uh, you, we didn't see each other such in such a group constellation until now. So that is maybe really an occasion to comment or ask something which we didn't weren't able to answer yet. I don't think they all got together. Mm. Or does anybody have a funny hobby? Something like uh, really funny? Um, photographing wheels or. Uh, I have a question to Eric. Yeah. Uh, Eric, uh, when I saw your presentation before you made your presentation, I had the occasion to have a look. You were uh, there were much more editions from your magazines, of your magazines. Uh, yeah. In the installation, and there was one very, I wouldn't say funny, but uh, uh, explicit collection of uh, men showing their penises and comparing them with something like uh, handies or uh, smartphones or shampoo or whatsoever, you want me to bottles. You want me to again was it, or was, no, no, was that an assignment or was that, is that really found footage from everywhere? No, that's found, uh, yeah, that, that was uh, found because we, uh, we found uh, around 8,000 uh, dick pics and um, um, yeah, maybe I can show a few of them because then we know where we're talking about. Yeah? Like, uh, yes. Uh, I'll show you a few. Or oh, you, you need to uh, enable my screen sharing if somebody can do that. Or you could just give us a live version, Eric. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll show you. But, uh, and then you next, Jurgen. No problem. Oh, that's so, you don't need to ask twice this one. <laughs> oh, it's uh, like, like this. Uh, so yeah. there's, uh, we found uh, with a group of people, not on my own, but we found about 8,000 uh, dick pics. Uh, in, in Germany, they call that Schwanzvergleich. So yeah. these are uh, images that you find online. And uh, in the magazine are 2,000 of them. And we ordered them on the basis of things that are next to it, uh, because they do this, of course, to share and to uh, uh, show the size of uh, their penis. And they do it on uh, Snapchat and uh, 
So in the magazine, the cover is, of course, with the alarm clock, uh, 638. And then it goes uh, to the first page where you see like the uh, shower bottles mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. then the, the shaving cream, the uh, deodorant and uh, brushing the hair. Mm -hmm. Then uh, there is breakfast. So it's almost a day in the life of Vic. Yeah, so, uh, and then there's the toothpaste. These are all uh, anonymous, uh, yeah, like uh, pictures that are just online and uh, hopefully nobody uh, recognizes themselves, but uh, then uh, they have to leave the door. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, like, <laughs> leaving the door. And, uh, and then they have to go to their work. So they are in the car, they put a CD on at work. Some people still work on a PC, other want to work on Mac. And uh, yeah, then there's the lunch. Uh, there is a cigarette break. Uh, you have to do some work. Then you have to spend some money for the evening dinner. So this is like one coin on a dick, two coins on a dick, three coins on a dick until like 28 coins on a dick. And, uh, and then it goes through, uh, through the day, just like uh, having a drink and a snack. You have to go to the toilet. If you're happy, there's paper. If not, uh, there's no paper, but it can function like a nice uh, extension. And um, then there's the evening dinner. There is after dinner entertainment. Uh, there is the remote control, which is uh, very often used, a uh, very useful item next to a dick. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's uh, uh, like the, the beer bottles. Then it's kind of the end of the day where you want some privacy. Uh, some people have sex. Uh, you need some uh, liquids maybe to help. And then on the right at bottom, it's kind of the end of the day. So uh, people go to sleep and then they take the teddy bear and then it's like the, the uh, end of the day. So. Uh, oh my God, this is great. Yeah. It's an immense like, collection. Yeah. I was I was really surprised of uh, there seems to be a scene because they want to compare so they have need to have a reference which yeah, is that's the idea that's the idea yeah, yeah with the head and shoulders and uh, the part with the sweets I was a little bit surprised because Snickers comes in different sizes so you have the small Snickers bar for instance and the large Snickers bar and they look the same yeah, so most people uh, use the small Snickers yeah. because they look like the big ones and then uh, yeah, yeah. No, um, it looks taller. It's like with the beer bottles. Also, you have the 0 0.5 bottle, and if you grab this large bottle, your hand seems to be very small. But if you grab the yeah, small yeah, yeah. bottle, you have a yeah, big hand. They also, they also have that for photography yeah. for fishers, like fishermen, uh, because when they catch a fish, they mm -hmm. have to. Most of them, they put like a package of Marlboro next to it, and uh, in fisher stores, you have like slightly smaller packages of Marlboro. <laughs> 15% smaller, but they look really uh, real. And then uh, the fishermen use this to uh, kind of make it like 15% bigger. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah. That was a very specific excursion to a very specific humorous. Are yeah, male, I was in are the male human beings? I, I had my talk in the morning, so I thought like at 11 o'clock, it's maybe not uh, that uh, digestible uh, than uh, yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's it's, it's it's fun. It's fun. Uh, unfortunately, you're not here. It would be even more fun, I think. What do you think as a scientist? <laughs> I think I prefer the pictures. Ah, you, no, no, not the life. <laughs> I wanted the people life, not the rest. Oh, yeah, that would be lovely. Not the 8,000. Yeah. Okay. So I think... I, I've been to some parties where it's almost that many in live, but yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. that was a lifetime ago. Yeah. <laughs> I think what, what I really like is this uh, fetish of, like this repetition of this photographic fetish to always photograph penises with objects. And I mean, we have this with a lot of other things as well. For example, um, Schloss Schwanenstein is a very good example, like the fetish to have a photo in front of Schloss Schwanenstein. And this is, I don't know, something very human, like to uh, what humans do to photograph themselves with these 
always repeating patterns, aesthetical patterns, and as we can see, it's uh, the same with if you want to photograph your penis, yeah, let's take an object next to it so you can see the size of it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I was going to say, I think more people are not taking these pictures for themselves, it's to send to people. Yeah, so exactly. Advertisement, mm -hmm. if you will. It's penis propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> oh but again, uh, the question is uh, how, how humorous is it in this uh, society of penis comparison uh, guys, com penis comparing guys? Is it, uh, are they having fun, making fun out of it, or is it more like a serious thing? I want to have a bigger one. No, it's a little, it, they are funny. Or, no? I think I uh, you know, they are not so. Uh, they are just for a useful purpose. Uh, so they 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 are just like look look at mine and uh, let's get late. And uh, but I think uh, like to yeah maybe uh, to put them in an order like this and to show the ridiculousness of it uh, that makes it uh, kind of hilarious, of course. But uh, yeah, like like uh, people can judge for themselves if they find that funny or not. But uh, mm -hmm. it's at least quite hilarious that there's. So many uh, people, you know, like uh, with the doorknob, uh, like for, that you find 18 pictures uh, of, a, of a dick uh, comparing itself next to a doorknob is quite hilarious, I think. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Um, where did you find them? Uh, are they open in the internet or uh, yeah. are they sent to you maybe? No, no, they, they are just in. Uh, in all kinds of uh, more dating channels, like more the Tinder and uh, oh. Grinder and those kind of uh, uh, dating channels, and but they are open uh, for uh, yeah, they they are they are just uh, uh, open to the public. Yeah. The interesting thing with this magazine, with the with the, with the collection that we did, uh, I mean the the book is already uh, quite for a long time sold out, but. Uh, when uh, so we, we 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 took them from uh, the internet we published the magazine and then we tried to do some publicity with the magazine uh, on the internet but uh, yeah the internet didn't want them back anymore because uh, yeah a lot a lot of uh, on a lot of channels if you put that on there it will be thrown off because it's like explicit but on the other hand it's quite strange because the internet is full of most of the images uh, online are explicit, uh, but um, yeah, that, that's kind of the strange uh, thing about these times. Sure. So, um, <laughs> if nobody of you in the um, video, in the room or on the stage has more questions, I would like to end now. Uh, we had a long day, I, I have learned a lot. <coughs> Thank you for this uh, teaching me so much because um, I didn't know so much about how to distribute humor, how humor is made in war, how dicks are becoming funny and um, bellies are becoming interesting, etc. And, and of course, Swiss landscapes are hilarious as soon as you find them in Canada. Um, thank you all uh, for this great day. And um, I'm not sure. I think somebody else will finish, or is it my job now? <laughs> ah, da ist noch jemand. Ah. <laughs> also vielen Dank allen euch. Es war wirklich toll. Und jetzt kommt noch ein Ab. Ja, ich glaube, ich würde mich eigentlich auch nur anschließen wollen, ähm, dass wir also den Referenten nochmal danken möchten dass wir die jetzt über den ganzen Tag so hatten und so ganz viele verschiedene Einblicke hatten und am Ende auch noch die Kurve gekriegt haben, um das auch abzurunden. Ähm, so ja, also Dienste, dieser ne? Stream ist auch aufgezeichnet worden und äh, weil wir nicht alle jetzt immer hier teilnehmen lassen konnten, ähm, verbreiten wir es hoffentlich noch weiter und man kann es dann nochmal nachsehen. Ähm, für die, die jetzt noch hier wirklich vor Ort sind, morgen sind noch eben zwölf Ausstellungen geöffnet und ich hoffe, alle können dann noch mal zu dem nun diskurs diskursiven Teil des Festivals auch noch ein bisschen rumflanieren und äh, ja, hoffe, wir sehen uns dann in irgendeiner Form dann vielleicht mal bei einem Festival wieder. In Darmstadt übrigens. Bitte. <lacht>
Vielen Dank. Ah, Maske. Naomi? Yes, hi! Oh, <laughs> That's great. <laughs>